We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Have we all forgotten about Leah? The Nigerian girl who was captured among other Christians. And she said, I will not deny Jesus. Till today, where is she? She is still there. We don't know whether she is dead or she is alive. This is a Christian, fellow Christian like you and I. If a Boko Haram adopts you, we do not pray for it. But those to whom it happened, nobody prayed for it. So it can happen to anybody. If it happens to you, if it happens to me, for instance, what will be the result? Revelation 2.10 says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. God is encouraging us to die for what we believe. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. The one that owns life, the one that gives us life in abundance, is the same one telling us that this life of the body, this life of the flesh, we should not hide it from him. Because he who saves his life, we do what? We lose it. And he who loses his life for the sake of God, for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we find it. I had a revelation last week, or probably earlier this week, and I was talking about death. Instead of me to say, for instance, I was, uh, I was saying... Uh, I can't remember the exact thing I was saying, but I was trying to say, when you die, and, and I said, when you thousand. So I was asking, why am I saying when you thousand instead of when you die? And the Spirit of God explained to me and was telling me in the revelation that this physical life we have today is short. But the life that death ushers us into is thousands of years. Thousands of thousands of years. What we call death is actually a gate. It's a gate of eternity. We all, we are eternal beings. And every one of us, we don't die. What we call death, Bible calls it sleep. Sleep. Because everyone that sleeps must wake up. We will all wake up one day. Those who die, everyone, we will all wake up. Either to eternal life or to eternal death. Everybody will wake up. So what we call death, God does not call it death. God calls it sleep because he that wakes people from the dead will wake us up one day. Death is only a gate that will be open for every one of us. There was one of our priests in a church service like this. He lifted up the offering bowl. You know offering. After people gave offering, their money, he lifted it up to God. And as he lifted it, he never knew that he was lifting up his life to God. That was the end of his life. He died. That was the end. How many of us were in Divine Akata last month? That mama that used to serve Igbe. That mama that was worshipping idols. How many of us know about it? Mrs. Rose Fisher. Mrs. Rose Fisher, last week, Thursday, we went to pack his idols. In fact, everybody was engaged. I went with uh, Brother Imai Nakireri. We went there to pack his idols. 
we brought them. It was a vicar's counseling day. So he came out, set everything on fire. Bought everything and baptized her last week, Friday, 24th of October. We baptized her. Do you know yesterday she died? <laughs> Thursday, yesterday, exactly one week, she died. In fact, um, after praying with her on the Wednesday, she was strong. The daughter told me that only herself, uh, daddy prayed with her. She went to the bedroom, took her bath, and then even yesterday, she was strong. And that they were even making her hair. They made part of the hair. 86 years old, in idolatry, they destroyed the idol house several times. She would rebuild it again. But... She repented. A week later, phew, she's gone. She died for her faith. She believed in Jesus Christ. 86 years old. And she is now asleep in the Lord. There was one mama who used to serve idols in Jakba Road. Very old. They took her for operation. After her baptism, that same month she died. So when I went back and I was asking, where is mama? They said, mama is gone. After, immediately after her repentance. It was just a matter of days. Mama died. And you know what came into my mind? I said, Satan, where is your sense? Satan, where is your sense? At the moment of death, God knew that this world will die and go to hell. He brought salvation to these people. God is expecting us to die for our faith. Do you know what it means to give your life to Christ in your old age? Do you know what it means? In your old age, after telling everybody that Satan is the real king, after all the gods you have sacrificed, after everything, to give your life to Christ in your old age, when Satan will be asking you, Mama, is it now you want to give your life to Christ when you can't clap your hands for Jesus again? When you don't have money again? But you know what? There is joy in heaven over a single sinner that repents than 99 who no longer needs repentance. Praise the Lord. God is expecting us to die for what we believe. The topic is be faithful unto death. I don't know what you are passing through right now, but God wants us to stand for something in our lives that we have believed. At every point in time, Satan comes for us. He comes for our faith. He wants us to compromise. He wants us to give up what we believe in. But you know what? God does not come every time to quench the fire for us. A lot of times, he comes to give us faith. He comes to give us grace. Paul said, I prayed a lot of times. Three times I asked the Lord, take this stone from my flesh. It's eating me up. Take it away, Lord. And each time the Lord keeps saying to me, Paul, my grace is sufficient unto you. You can do it. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. This thing you call weakness, I am revealing my strength through it. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You can do all things too. There are some of us, every blessed day we complain. We just wish our building could just collapse and fall on us so that we can just die. Some of us are afraid of hell. If not, we would have killed ourselves. Am I lying? There are people who want to die because of what they are passing through. They don't want to endure. 
They don't want to resist. Some even, they quickly give up their faith. Some of us, we feel that for somebody not to have a job is something that is worthy to die for. So when somebody does not have a job, they want to die. They feel the whole life is crumbling on them. That their world is crumbling. I want to tell you that nothing is too important in this world. I'm telling you the truth. If you think that having a good house, having a good husband, having a good wife, having good children is the utmost thing, you are wrong. <laughs> Nothing is worth dying for in this world. Nothing is worth dying for. Have you not seen people, men, cutting off one of their toes or fingers to make money for ritual? In fact, some men give up their virility, their manhood to make money. <laughs> and they feel that Making money will give them happiness. There are celebrities who sell their souls because they want to make fame. They want to be famous. Where is Michael Jackson today, who was an Illuminati? And he wasted money that's supposed to help the poor on himself, doing plastic surgery every time. Until he became useless to himself. Where is he today? I want to ask you, how many of us we agree to live for 200 years here? 200 years. Who wants to live for 150 years here? Anybody? You want to live for 150 years? 150 years. Where is 150? 150, thank you. 150. Mama, only 100. You are close to 100. It's only 100 you want. Only 100. Papa, don't, you want 150. Okay, thank you. All those of you who want 150, may the Lord give you 150. But don't forget that old age comes with challenges. That a time we come, you will start forgetting things. You may not even recognize your children again. <laughs> eh? When you were born, you used pampas. And in the old age, you are asking for? You are equally asking for what? And that time, adult pampas. And you know, when children defecate, it does not smell like adults. Eh? Their intestine, intestine of children are very fresh. And whatsoever thing that is passing through the intestine is fresh. But old mamas and old papas, their intestine is what? It's old. And whatsoever thing that is passing through it is what? <laughs> it smells. I've seen old people asking God to take them. Because old age comes with challenges. Old age is a blessing. But old age has its own challenges. There are some of us who are evil Christians. We can't do without a woman. We can't do without a man. Old age we come. And in that old age, even if they bring Miss World... Only one verse of the Bible you'll be quoting. Vanity upon vanity, all is what? You remember David, who took the wife of Uriah when he was old? They brought a beautiful girl and laid her before David so that David would be warm. But you know what? David had killed and lied. Just to see the lap of a woman. That David could not touch her. 
in his old age. That is what old age comes with. Even the life, sometimes you say, brother, will you die? I shall not die. It's a lie, you will die. <laughs> Sister, will you die? I shall not die. Who told you? You will die. We will die. But what we pray for is not that we should not die at all, but that we should not die before our time. Sometimes when I see some women, some men, 80 years old, 90 years old, they are binding death and casting death, I laugh at them. Sometimes when some people call me, hey, pray for mama, pray for papa, pray for mama, and I ask them, how old? And they say, mama is 94 years old. <laughs> Somebody said, life is sweet. This world of ice fish, eh? this ice fish world, this Boko Haram world, this world of dust and hamatan and kata and imported cockroach. This life is sweet, Abi. Eh? There is nothing sweet in this world that is worth dying for. We will all live and leave all our belongings behind. In fact, some of us are living already. Some of us, we are alive, but we know that part of us have crossed the road. You know something that gives me mind sometimes? 2010, when I had accident and I lost my leg, since that time I tell myself, Ozana, a part of you is dead, has gone to wait for you. A part of me is dead. It has gone to wait for me. So it's a constant reminder that I will live and go and meet that path that is cut off already. This life, whether we like it or not, one day it will go. You they look at him. You they look at him. Some people don't want to answer. You they look at him. You will look at it. It will be going before our very eyes. When the angel of death comes, it will not answer for bribe. It will not answer for money. It will not answer for the best doctor in town. It will not answer shams. Anything, no. Only one thing it answers. Follow me. As it takes the life, it turns its back it goes to God. There is no need hiding this life from God. That is what I am saying, saints. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. Some of us, we so much like money that even if there is death in the place, we will enter and make sure we bring the money out. Oh, have you not seen a tanker carrying petrol? Tanker carrying diesel. Tanker carrying kerosene. Have you not seen? When they have accident, you see people with buckets going to fetch. Eh? Is that not that? Look at the fire in uh, Onisha. Last month. Number of people were killed. Buildings were burnt to ashes. People and millions, millions got lost. But the same Onisha. Let a tanker fall today and fuel, diesel, kerosene is rushing out, gushing out. People will still go with buckets to fetch. Why? Because it is money. Even though it is stealing, they don't care. They will still go. So if people can risk their lives because of money, why can't we risk our lives because of eternity? Why can't we risk our lives because of Jesus? Hebrews 12, 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, 
striving against sin. Let me explain to you. God wants us to resist sin, to resist the devil, and even use our lives to resist the devil and resist sin. Really, you see, sorry to say, I'm not saying it's a good thing. Uh, nobody can justify rape. There is no reason. But rarely you see a lady that was about being raped and then a Christian, they injured her. How many times? Do you know I tell my daughters, it is the house of God. Protect it at all costs. Somebody wants to rape you? Struggle. It is a house of God. Protect it with your life. Don't allow anybody to defile you. Fight. If your hand can hold anything, use it to defend yourself. Defend the house of God. Defend your life. Defend yourself. But you know some will say, eh, he was powerful. Why you no shout? Some of these things happen in the compass where there are tenants, neighbors. But they feel, well, after all, it's not killing me. Everybody is doing it. You know, the Bible says that if a woman gets raped in the town and they are caught, the man and the woman should be stoned to death. But if it is in the bush, only the man should be stoned to death. Do you know why? Because it is assumed that if it happens in the town, the woman will scream, and people will hear, and come and rescue her. But if it is in the bush, it is assumed that probably she screamed, but nobody came to rescue her. But many of these things happen in town. But because of threats, people kindly submit. Even men too. If you don't, if, if you, if you, Make boom. If you don't do it, I will shout. And everybody will believe that you are the ones trying to force me. And some men will just agree and do it. After all, men pay for it. Now that it's coming free, why not make the best use of the opportunity? And they quickly submit and do it. Forgetting that you are destroying the house of God and living in sin and committing sin. Women, we have to be wise. If you suspect anything, you are with your mobile phone, press record and start recording. I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you a tip. Men, be wise. If you see some kind of moves that a woman is trying to behave funny and it's a lonely place, Press record on your phone quietly and start recording. So that if she's saying, I will shout, say, shout. Do you understand me? The recording is your evidence. The Bible says, Hebrews 12, 4, you have not yet resisted sin. To the point of shedding your blood. That means God expects us to resist evil. And in course of resisting evil, we spill our blood. Remember, the life of every human being is in what? It's in the blood. So, this place is equally telling us that in resisting sin, in resisting evil... In defending what we believe, God is expecting us to shed our blood and die for what we believe. How many of us still have our great great grandparents alive? Great great grandparents still alive? Who? They are gone, eh? So that is an evidence that we will soon join them, right? Eh? Even if it is 20 or 50 years or even 100 years, is it not soon? Yes. We will soon join them. Yes. 
Eh? What about the person we are going to meet? God. Is there no need for us to prepare to go and meet him? Eh? Is there no need to prepare? We need to prepare. I'll tell you somebody, how many, of, how many people have you seen in this country that hunger killed? Hunger killed them and they died. How many people have you seen? People are selling their bodies because of hunger. People are selling their bodies because of hunger, because there is no job. When God is expecting you to shed your blood, under hunger you cannot be here. If, the, if God will watch the children dropping out of school, let them drop. I told the lady, you are, host, you, are, uh, you are the one taking care of yourself, paying your school fees. And I told her, if it means you dropping out, please drop out of school. And let God see that your faith is big enough to stand, to drop out of school. I once said one day, on this pulpit, that it is better to be fed by ravens than to be fed with filthy hands. If you are a pastor and you want to make money, you will make money very well. There are people who are ready to buy your ministry and give you money. And people are giving up their ministries because of money. People are giving up their responsibilities to God and to humanity because of money. Politicians are selling their souls, going to meetings 2 a.m. in the night because of money. People can go and carry ballot buses and run and stake their lives because of what? Because of money. What about you and I? Can't we stake our lives because of eternity? I believe that God has spoken to somebody's heart. Yes. I once said, the God that we believe in and preach, but we cannot die for, is not qualified to be believed in. The God we can preach, the God we can praise, but we cannot give our lives to. But we cannot spend our lives for. We cannot sacrifice our lives for. That God is not worthy of worship. If your faith cannot carry you, then it is not faith. Everybody has a cross. Jesus said we should carry our cross and follow him daily. Do you know what a cross is? The one of Jesus. What did they use it for? They used it to crucify him. Some of us, because Jesus mentioned cross, we are carrying plastic cross, cellophane cross, cross that cannot be used to crucify us. Some of us, we are carrying our crosses, but we are not carrying it to Golgotha. It's not going to Calvary. Some of us, we are carrying very beautiful crosses just to show to everybody that we are Christians, but we are not ready for crucifixion. It's wrong. Can you be on your feet? As a pastor, I know that for me to make people to like me is to become an enemy of God. And for me to be a friend of God, I must be ready to be the enemy of people. So it is a choice that I have to make. Because a friend of this world is what? Can you lift up your hands before the Lord? Ask the Lord to help your faith. Ask the Lord to help you to be faithful unto death. It is not by power, not by might. There is nothing like boasting here. If the Lord does not supply the grace, by strength no man prevails. Ask him for strength. Ask the Lord for grace. Lord, Give the grace to stand for you at all times. The grace to stand at all costs. The grace to be faithful to him. In the face of hardship. 
When family people are saying one thing, the grace to say, I am standing for another thing, and that thing is what God likes. I'm standing for God. When everybody is going to one side, the grace to say, Lord, I will go the opposite direction. Ask God for that grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This one is individually. What is that thing that is eating you up and you see that it is so big? This time you remember the challenge. It's like let the ground open up so that it will swallow you. You are going to lift it up before God. As the Lord, God, help me. Help me. Even as I wait for your intervention, even as I wait for your will to be done in my life, help me. Give me grace to overcome. I need the grace to follow. The grace to abide. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Lift up your two eyes. I want to pray for you. And before I pray for you, open your eyes. Me, I have problems. Eh? I'm not telling you that I don't have challenges. I have enough challenges. But they don't catch my attention. I divert my attention from them. I don't mourn. I don't ask God why in my life. If I am confused, I go and pray and seek the face of God. It has been long, I sorrow. Do you know what sorrow is? Eh? It has been long. I don't sorrow in my life. I have made up my mind. In this world, nothing is too big. Nothing is too big. I have had challenges. Even now, I have challenges. But anytime you ask me, how are you? I will tell you I'm fine. I don't tell you alarm is roasting me. I don't tell you like that. Everybody here can bear me witness. I have never used that language to anybody that this are hard to... This. No! The Lord knows my needs and He will provide the Bible says he makes all things beautiful in his own time, not in my time. I know he loves me. I don't want to kill myself before his promises will come to pass. I don't want to dry up because I am thinking. He said that he knows the number of the hairs of my head and that none falls to the ground except by his will. I know God loves me. So I don't need to be worried. Why killing yourself? I met problem in this world. I will leave problems in this world. I can only do my best and leave the rest for who? That is my principle in life. I'm not going to kill myself. No. After doing my best, if anything happens, I leave it to God. God, you saw it when it was happening. That is my faith. And I recommend this faith to you. Amen. Use it to live your life. The day you see food, eat. Who told you in this cathedral there have been times I had no food to eat? There have been times I have no food to eat, but nobody will know. That is life. I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. I know how to abide. In the time of need, in the time of plenty, in the time of want, I know how to abide. That is Paul for you. Now lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. Lord, stressing the faith of these your children. Amen. Father, you are expecting us to be faithful unto death. Stressing the faith of these your children. Amen. If your faith is drying up, may the Lord help your own belief. Amen. If people are questioning you, where is your God? Where is the God that you serve? You said to us that God is able to provide for your needs. Where is that God today? May God Almighty answer their questions for you. Amen. 
Whosoever that is questioning your faith, may God provide answers to their questions. Lord, any question in our hearts that we can't find answers to, come and answer it in the name of Jesus. Any trial you are passing through now, I pray for you, you will not give up. Receive grace to overcome. Receive strength to overcome. May you be focused. May you be faithful. May you be immovable. May you remain focused even until death. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke every temptation in your life. It will not cause you to fall in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever thing that is in your life that has become a reproach, may God Almighty turn it to praise in the name of Jesus. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.